Hi, right on the range today, so please bear with gunfire here in the background. And today I'm going to answer the academic question of, if I could only have one firearm, what would my choice be? Now this comes with a long list of disclaimers, and I want to mention three of them. First, it is an academic question because I live in a jurisdiction where I can own more than one firearm. Secondly, people live in different jurisdictions and are subject to different laws. People have different capabilities and limitations, different budgets, and different needs. So, my choice for the one may be very different than yours. Which brings us to point three, which is nothing I say today should be inferred as a recommendation. I'm only answering the question, what would my choice be if I could only have one? So let me show you some of the firearms that were nominated to be that one and explain some of the reasoning behind it. Now when you talk about the subject of if you could only have one firearm, the first thing a lot of people will think of is versatility. And when you think of versatility, you think of a shotgun, which is a good way to think. A nominee would be this Remington 870. You can get different barrels, you can have a full length hunting barrel, a rifled barrel with sights on it, an extension to the magazine, aftermarket stock, the list goes on. And an 870 in 12 gauge, which would be the most common, 12 gauge ammunition comes in a vast array of different birdshot, buckshot, slugs, sabo slugs, flechettes, flares, the list goes on at Astra. So guns like the Remington 870 or a Mossberg 500 or 590 series may be a very good choice if you could only have one. Now a lot of people would select a rifle and many people would select some kind of military type platform, which for me of course would be some kind of AR platform very well suited to target shooting. You can hunt with it. You can wage war with it. It's good for home defense, especially if you have one with a shorter stock and a carbine length barrel. But there's one other type of rifle that many people will immediately dismiss, and I don't think you should. And that is something in caliber 22 long rifle. 22 is low powered, but the ammunition is readily available, inexpensive, small and light. And not always, but usually, the guns are relatively small and light and reasonably priced. For a 22, my choice would be a Ruger 1022, specifically this takedown model. Being able to take it apart like that adds a degree of versatility to it. It comes with a 10 shot magazine. Aftermarket 25 shot magazines are readily available. You can even get magazines with a capacity of 100 or more. And there's one other aspect to shooting a 22 rifle that a lot of people don't think of, but is absolutely germane to this topic. Let me show you what I mean. And this is a very important aspect of 22 rifles. And that is that 22 rifles are fun to shoot. In the discussion of only having one firearm and talking about rifles and shotguns, one of the topics that will come up is the combination gun. Now the term combination gun can mean a lot of different things to different people, but here in the United States what you're typically talking about is a double barreled firearm that's over and under where the top barrel is a rifle and the bottom barrel is a shotgun. There's many different configurations. Recently I saw one that was 357 Magnum over 20 gauge. I've seen 3030 over 20 gauge. Here in the United States, what's probably the most common is 22 long rifle over 20 gauge or 22 Winchester Magnum rimfire over 20 gauge. And for some people in some situations, a firearm like that might be a great choice. When I've fired them, when I've hunted with them, what I have found is that combining a single shot rifle and a single shot shotgun leaves me with a firearm that's really not quite enough of either. On the same concept as the combination gun, there's an entire genre of firearms that's been popular in Europe for a long time, where there's different configurations of trying to combine a rifle and a shotgun, and according to the sources I read, there's many configurations, and they all have different names, even though they're really mostly different twists on the same theme. What's probably best known is the drilling, double-barreled side-by-side -side shotgun with the addition of a rifle barrel. However, if you have an over and under shotgun with a single rifle barrel on the side, that's just a different way of filling the same niche, but it has a different name. There's the double-barreled rifle and a single shotgun barrel. Again, different twist on the same theme and a different name. I've even seen one that was a double-barreled side-by-side shotgun with the addition of an over and under rifle. Again, different twist on the same theme 
and a different name. And the vast array of different names, different calibers, different configurations is staggering. And for some people in some situations, one of the firearms of the many in that genre might be a good choice. However, for me, if I could only have one firearm, one of the niches it has to fill is concealed carry. So for me, my one firearm is going to be a handgun. And here's some of the nominees. One of which is the Ruger Mark III pistol, caliber 22 long rifle semi-auto with a 10-shot magazine. And I might select this for the same reason I might select a 22 rifle. But again, with only one gun, a lot of people are going to be thinking versatility. Okay, for versatility, you might think of something like this Smith & Wesson Model 686 6 357 Magnum revolver. There's a wide variety of 357 Magnum ammo available. It can shoot 38 Special. There's a degree of versatility. This Glock Model 31 is a caliber 357 SIG. Well, some of the Glocks you can trade out the barrel and use 40 Smith & Wesson. Again, a degree of versatility. But when talking about handguns and when talking about versatility and trying to combine the two, one thing that will immediately come to many people's minds is some version of the Taurus Judge Revolver. Because it can shoot 45 Colt and 410 bore shot shells, some people will consider this the epitome of versatility. And if you could only have one handgun or just one gun, there are many people that are of the opinion that the Taurus Judge Revolver would be the good choice. And that's an opinion those people are free to have, and it's an opinion I disagree with. And of course, everything I'm saying today are just my opinions. And my opinions are based on my training, my education, my experience. Different people have different experiences, so they have different opinions. Now, we've done several presentations on the Taurus Judge Revolver, so I don't want to rehash all of that. But there is one short demonstration I want to do with the judge. Let me show you what I mean. One of the reasons people advocate the Taurus Judge Revolver is the idea that when it's loaded with buckshot, the pattern spread will increase your hit probability. This is a point of view that I disagree with. Let me illustrate what I'm talking about. I have two shoot and see targets set up at a distance of five yards. I'll shoot the lower one with this 357 Magnum Revolver and then shoot the upper one with the Taurus Judge, which is loaded with triple-lot buck. Let's take a closer look at the targets. So on our lower target with our 357, we of course see single projectile impacts. On our upper target, this impact down here is the shot cup that doesn't count. But with our triple up buck, we do see a little bit of pattern spread, but only a little bit. The idea that this minimal pattern spread is going to in any meaningful way increase your hit probability is something I consider to be fiction. However, we are only shooting at five yards. I'll paste up these shot holes and we'll do this drill again from a greater distance. Now this was four shots from the 357 and two from the Taurus Judge, fired at a distance of 25 yards. And as we can see, the Taurus Judge is still not enhancing my hit probability, and the buckshot is significantly less powerful than 357 Magnum. Now some people will argue that you could load the Taurus Judge with 45 cold ammunition. Yes, you can, but that still would not enhance my hit probability, and it would still be less powerful than the 357 Magnum. So in the academic question of what would you have if you could only have one handgun, for some people the Taurus Judge might be the right choice. For me, it is not. Another disadvantage of the Taurus Judge Revolver as it relates to concealed carry is that it's very bulky. A disadvantage it shares with handguns like this Smith & Wesson Model 686 357 and this Smith & Wesson Model 29 44 Magnum. Both of these handguns are accurate and powerful, but they are very bulky. So it looks like I'm going to go with an autoloader. Even a full-sized autoloader is going to have less bulk than a full-sized revolver. So in the genre of full-sized autoloaders, a lot of people would go for one of the many different versions of Glock. And that's a good choice. 
However, I don't like the sights on Glocks, and I really don't like the grip. So yes, this one does fit my hand better than this one does. And this one fits my hand better than this one does. So it looks like we've narrowed down our finalists to the Beretta 92FS in caliber 9 by 19 and the Colt Government model in caliber 38 Super Automatic. Both of these are very different formats, and one of the important things would be, which one can I shoot better? Let's see if we can find out. So I'll shoot from 20 yards and I'll shoot the Beretta 92FS 9mm at the upper target and the Colt Government Model 38 Super at the lower target and let's see how they compare. Well, it would appear I got a better group with the 9mm than I did with the 38 Super. However, if you look at the scoring rings, the scores were 37 and 38. So I'll put up a couple of new targets, do this drill again, and see if we can confirm these results. So it looks like with the 9 I had a better group than I did with the 38 Super, with the exception of that one flyer. But if we look at the scoring rings, it's 46 versus 39. And again, that's because of that one flyer. But what this tells me is that I am shooting the 92FS a little better than I am the Colt Government model. But this is slow fire. Let's try a fast shooting drill and see how they compare. Now I have some fairly big targets, and I'll shoot the 9 at the upper target, the 38 at the lower target. I'll shoot from 10 yards, firing as fast as I think I can hit the target, and we'll see how the two pistols compare for accuracy and speed. And we'll start with the 92F. Now let's see how that compares to the government model. Now let's take a closer look at the targets. And I may have shot just a little bit faster with the 38 Super, but we see that the group with the 9mm is significantly better. In previous presentations, we've shot 38 Super Auto Plus P side by side with 9 by 19. We've chronographed both of them, shot them both at various targets, so we don't have to rehash all of that here today. But I do want to briefly discuss the comparative power of 38 Super Auto Plus P and 9 by 19. In any fair comparison, where the ammunition's from the same manufacturer, you have similar projectile weights, handguns with similar barrel lengths, 38 Super Auto Plus P is significantly more powerful than 9 by 19. I've shot deer with 9x19 and gotten poor results. I've shot deer with 38 Super Auto and gotten very good results. But when I say fair comparison, there are people who will point out that it isn't fair because I'm comparing plus P ammunition with standard pressure ammunition. 
and to explain why that is fair requires the short version of the history of 38 Super Auto. In the early days of auto-loading pistols, caliber 38 Auto was introduced. Well, a couple of decades later, 38 Auto was revamped with a much hotter powder charge, making a much more powerful cartridge, and it was called 38 Super Auto. You can see the potential hazard of having ammunition with identical external dimensions, one being a lot more powerful than the other. You wouldn't want to put the more powerful ammo into a gun made for the less powerful ammo. So, decades after that, the designator plus P was added to all 38 Super ammunition just to further differentiate it from 38 Auto, making it hopefully less likely someone would have an ammunition mishap. So when you buy 38 Special plus P, that plus P means something. When you buy 38 Super Auto plus P, that's just a designator and it doesn't really mean anything. So comparing the plus P to the standard pressure is fair. However, some 9x19 ammunition does carry the designator plus P or plus P plus. And, as we've seen in previous presentations, sometimes that just doesn't mean much. But in some cases it does. And if you have ammunition where it does mean something, and you have the right plus P or plus P plus 9x19 ammunition, you can really close the power gap between 9 and 38 Super. So although this is more powerful, and this will be the gun that I'll be carrying when I go deer hunting this fall, if I could only have one firearm, it would be a handgun, and it would be the Beretta 92FS in caliber 9x19, because this is the handgun that I'm going to be able to shoot reliably and accurately, and there's no replacement for shot placement. I assume if you could only have one gun, your choice would be different than mine, and if it is, I'd love to hear about it. So, as always, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the If I Could Only Have One Gun video.